So you might have noticed your character doesn't always respond when pressing the jumping key, especially when you're on uneven terrain. You might have also noticed that on angled surfaces your character slides down them slowly. It's very subtle but it's still irritating. I'm going to show you how to fix both of these things. There are two reasons for the jumping issue. First, as you move around, the character may be briefly losing contact with the ground. The second is that the is on floor method of the kinematic body is a bit finicky, particularly on angled surfaces, which is also the cause of the sliding. Some people use a rake cast to create their own ground detection, but I found that it has its own set of issues and can be a little tedious to implement. I like to use an area node instead. I have a map and a basic character controller already set up. I'll leave a link to the starting project in the description below. I'm going to start by replacing the is on floor function with a method that has better detection. First add an area node to the player and call it ground check. This node has signals that are admitted when a static body or another area enters or exits. Add a collision shape to it. This will determine the space that the area node scans. Set its shape property to a sphere shape. Make sure the shape has the same radius as the player's capsule shape and that the area is at the bottom of the player. Now set the Y value of the collision shape's transform to slightly less than the radius so that just a sliver of it is exposed below the capsule shape. Next, click the node tab of the ground check, then under signals, double click body entered. Click the player and then hit connect. This will create a function in the player script that runs every time a body enters the ground check. Now do the same with body exited. In the script, create an array called ground. This will contain all the bodies that are currently within the ground check. When bodies enter the ground check, they will be added to the ground array. When they exit, they will be removed. Elements are removed from arrays by index. You can get the index using the find function. Now replace the isOnFloor call in the physics process with ground.size. If the ground array is empty, this will return zero, which converts to false. And it'll convert to true for any other number. Now when we try to jump, it is immediately canceled. This is because the ground check area is still touching the ground the next time the physics process runs after jumping, and our vertical velocity is set to zero. This is set to zero to stop the vertical velocity caused by falling, which will always be negative, while the vertical velocity caused by jumping will always be positive, so we'll only reset it if it's less than zero. Now when we jump, our character just continuously floats up. This is because the ground check area is detecting the player's collision shape and adding it to the ground array. Since the ground array isn't empty, it's returning true and the vertical velocity is never decreased by the gravity value. It is also positive, so it's never set to zero either. It just stays at the jump strength value. There are two ways to fix this. One is by changing the collision properties of the player node. The layer property determines what something is detected by, and the mask property determines what it detects. So a body or area node will only detect things with layer numbers that match its mask numbers. The ground check has a mask of one, so we'll take the player node off of layer one. For some reason, the ground check area also needs to be removed from layer one for this to work. I haven't been able to figure out why exactly, I think it might have something to do with it being a child of the player. Let me know if you can shed some light on this. The other fix is to make sure that the body parameter isn't the player before adding it to the ground array in the onEntered function. Now we'll make it so the player will still be able to jump for a brief period of time after leaving the ground. I'd recommend using this even if the built-in isOnFloor function is working fine for you. It'll make movement near ledges or jumping off of them more forgiving and less frustrating. Most games actually have a mechanic like this. Add a timer node to the player and call it jump allowance. Make sure one shot is checked and set the time to something like a half second. This will be the amount of time you can jump after leaving the ground. Back in the body exited function, we'll check to see how many bodies are left. If there are none, we'll start the timer. Now create a new function called can jump. This will return true if the ground array has bodies in it or if the timer is not stopped then we'll replace the ground.size call in the physics process with the can jump function call. Now there are just a couple little things to take care of. Because of the timer, the player floats for a bit after leaving the ground. To fix the floating, we'll separate the falling and jumping code. Put a ground.size call back in place of the can jump function call, then put the statement that checks to see if the jump key has been pressed in its own if statement and use the can jump function call there. Now the player will begin to fall as soon as nothing is in contact with its ground check area, but will still have half a second to jump. Also, if the player jumps and then hits the jump key again within half a second afterwards, they can jump a second time. To fix the double jumping issue, declare a boolean at the top, call it just jumped, and initialize it to false. 
Have that set to true right after the player jumps and have it set to false when the player makes contact with the ground again. Then in the can jump function, put parentheses around jump allowance is stopped, then add or just jumped. Now in order to return true, both is stopped and just jump must be false. So now when the player jumps, they'll be prevented from jumping again until they're back on the ground. Hopefully you found this helpful and thanks for watching.